These women are on the hunt for hair. Not just any hair, though. Ideally, it needs to be long and undyed. Noen Tivan travels more than 50 miles a day to the streets of Hanoi. This client sold two years of growth for just $7. But how does hair that costs as little as $7 in Vietnam end up selling for thousands in salons around the world? We went to the streets of Vietnam to investigate this global business. Nguyen Thi Van attracts clients with a recorded broadcast. She quit her job as a mosaic worker nearly a decade ago. Now, no one earns up to $300 a month. That's a bit more than the average income in Vietnam. She decides how much to offer based on the seller's age, the length, texture, color of their hair, and whether it's been dyed. No one regularly stops by hair salons. If they have clippings that are at least four inches long, she makes an offer. She bought this hair for about $2 and sold it for about $4. Today, Nguyen is buying hair from Vu Uti Tham at her home. It took her two years to grow her hair this long, but the bundle was shorter than last time. Mỗi năm thì cắt được nhiều, nhưng năm nay để cắt ngang nó rẻ hơn. Nguyen told Insider she sold the hair to a buying agent for $11 and said her markup is between 20% and 50%. It's a completely unregulated industry for a start, so there's no sort of who, who decides what the value of hair is. So generally it's the person who's buying the hair who's trying to get it for as cheap a cost as possible. Emma Tarlow is a professor of anthropology who has studied the global hair trade. Hair is such an incredibly intimate fibre, you know, it's actually a body part, uh, but it's also a body product at the same time. And I was fascinated how something that is so intimate could actually be commodified and travel around the world and end up on the head of somebody else. Vietnam exported $7.6 million worth of hair products like wigs and weaves in 2019. That's almost nothing compared to China, where exports added up to more than $1 billion. China is also one of the most controversial markets. In 2020, U.S. Customs and Border Protection seized shipments of hair extensions from the country in response to allegations of forced labor by the U.S. government. This company markets its products as ethical because it pays good wages and doesn't use forced labor. Director Fanti Tui says they pay up to $550 a month, which is above average. The factory only uses human hair while others mix it with synthetic or animal hair. This is one of the more expensive products in the factory, a 20-inch blonde weft that sells for $105. The factory owner told Insider they charge higher prices for products that reflect their responsible practices. The owner said they only buy hair from vendors who have been working with them for more than a decade. But Fan is aware that many people selling their hair 
live in poverty. Đặc biệt là các cái vùng dân tộc thì người người phụ nữ buộc phải cắt đi mái tóc của mình. People don't part with their hair unless they need money. Usually, unless of course they're, they're parting with it for religious reasons. That's the case in India, where Hindu devotees donate their hair to temples that later auction it to factories. There's this kind of desire for human hair. They want it to be human, but they don't want the human story that goes with the hair because that human story often involves poverty, hardship. Karen Mitchell has been selling hair for more than 15 years. Although it's mostly Indian hair, but we do sell some imported hair from Malaysia, um, uh, some European hair in, in small quantities for my clients who want their Jewish wig, which are called shaitals. She says she has high-profile clients like Lizzo and Rihanna. The clientele is very diverse. I mean, I would say it's probably in Manhattan 65 to 70% black women, but we have a lot of like Caucasian women, Asian women, uh, Hispanic women, Indian women. Before the pandemic, the value of the global hair trade was growing at around 15% a year. It totaled $1.3 billion in 2019. Anything made with natural hair is labeled as luxury, and some of her extensions cost up to $2,000. We sell what's considered to be the Rolls Royce of hair extensions. We sell luxury hair extensions. Mitchell also sells to hairstylists like Carrie Jolie. She knows which country the hair comes from, but that's about it. For all the techniques that I do, I always recommend using the human hair because it lasts longer, durable as far as like in between shampoos, the hair won't tangle as long as it's good quality. So this will go on the top. You're investing in, you know, your hair, so you want it to last longer so that you can reuse it and reuse it. Lorraine Pierre spends up to $200 a month on hair extensions. Real hair lasts longer and feels more natural than plastic, but it comes with a high cost. For Nguyen, it's just business. Không, tôi chả bao giờ tôi tôi hỏi, tức là mình người ta gọi thì là mình mua thế thôi, còn chẳng bao giờ hỏi.